Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. I've got some Brennicky USA 28 gauge slugs we're gonna take a look at today. Now these have been elusive. They've been hard for me to get a hold of. I finally got some. Uh, all of my normal places where I buy my ammo show it listed, but out of stock, uh, discontinued, back ordered, uh, just depending on where you look, it just, it was really hard to get these. But I do have some now, I've got a few of them here. I've got about 20 rounds, uh, 19. I cut one up just to see what it looks like on the inside. We'll get to that here in just a second. But we'll go down to the range and, and do some shooting and testing down there. But first I thought we'd take a close up look and kind of see what these are all about. Okay, so on the front of the box, there's a picture of what appears to be an adult hunter handing a shotgun to a youth. Now, they didn't just use that picture by accident. These slugs are marketed as low recoil and good for beginners and recoil sensitive folks. So they're getting the message across through that picture. It says 28 gauge, two and three quarter inch. There is no three inch 28 gauge. As of right now, two and three quarter inch is it. So let's take a look at the back of the box. Now here it says, big performance in small bore shotguns. Now Brennicky brings its 115 plus years experience and legendary performance to the 28 gauge. The 28 produces superb accuracy with moderate recoil and adds a new dimension of versatility to the 28 gauge. Ideal for small game, home defense, and all around shooting. All right, so let's dissect that statement just a little bit, read more into it. It says, Brennicky brings its 115 plus years of experience. Brennicky invented the shotgun slug. So they want to remind you how long they've been doing this. They know what they're doing. They're bringing their legendary performance to the 28 gauge. The Brennicky 28 produces superb accuracy with moderate recoil. We're gonna test the accuracy just a little bit, at least with the shotgun that I have in 28 gauge. Of course, different shotguns are going to bring different accuracy. Moderate recoil. Again, these are kind of marketed for people that don't want the recoil of a 12 gauge, 10 gauge, or a even a lightweight 20 gauge has a lot of felt recoil because there's just not much gun there to soak it up. So these definitely are going to have moderate recoil. And adds a new dimension of versatility to the 28 gauge. Yes, it does. As far as I know, these are the only factory made shotgun slugs for the 28 gauge. If there's more out there, I don't know about them. You guys let me know in the comments section. Now I know there's slugs offered for the reloader. That's really where you get your versatility at. But as far as factory offered, currently produced slugs, Brennicky is the only one offering one for the 28 gauge that I am aware of. Ideal for small game, home defense, and all-around shooting. Small game, I assume they're talking about game like maybe groundhogs, coyote, things like that. But I would go as far as to say medium game. I think this is a great choice for white-tailed deer, especially in places like where I hunt, where it's wooded. Your shots are going to be within 100 yards, no farther than that. Most of them's going to be a lot closer, to be honest with you. Home defense, of course, it's a 28 gauge, nobody, no bad guy is gonna to wanna to get hit with a 28 gauge slug, any shotgun slug for that matter. So, agreed there. All around shooting, uh, yeah. I mean, they're great for all around shooting. They are a bit expensive. They run two to three dollars each, depending on where you find them. So, yeah, they're okay for all around shooting if you can afford it to, to just go out and do plinking with it. We're gonna do some all around shooting today so I guess I'll be backing that statement up. Uh, gives us a muzzle velocity, 1,450 feet per second. We'll test that over the chronograph here when we go to the range. But at 1,450 feet per second, that's going to give us an energy of 1,318 foot-pounds. So plenty of energy, plenty of velocity for, for most medium-sized game hunting. And all the way out to 100 yards, it slows down to 918 feet per second and energy drops off to 529 foot pounds. So still packing a pretty good wallop at 100 yards. And it gives us our bullet path down here. And this is if you had a scope that the, the si line of sight of the scope 
is two inches above the line of the bore and you had it sighted in for 87 yards and this would be your trajectory. You would be two inches low, of course, at the muzzle because your scope is two inches higher than the bore. At 25 yards, you would be 0.7 inches high, 50 yards, two inches high, 75 yards, inch and a half high, and then 100 yards, you drop to 1.2 inches low. So as you can see, once it drops below line of sight, it's gonna drop off really fast. The good thing here though is from 100 yards in, you've only got a four inch variant there as far as elevation. You've got two inches low at the muzzle and two inches high at 50. Everything else is gonna fall in between that from zero to 100 yards. So you wouldn't have to worry about any kind of holdover or anything like that. So this is what the round looks like. Very clean, well-made round. Got the transparent plastic where we can actually see the slug inside there. So you can see the slug stops about right here. You've got about half an inch of case that is empty to the end. Beautiful little shot shell. Now I did have to go ahead and cut one open so we could get a look at the slug. I hated to do that. These were so hard to get. I hated to cut one and not be able to shoot it. But I wanted us to be able to get a close up look at it before we do any shooting. So I just split this case down the middle and pulled the slug out. As you can see, it's got that distinctive Brennicky wad there. That's a plastic wad connected to the lead slug. Now, I already mentioned that these weigh 5 eighths of an ounce, or at least that's what it tells us on the box. 5 eighths of an ounce is gonna come out to about 273 and a half grains. I weighed this on my RCBS scale and came up with 272.1 grains, so very close to what it's advertised. Then I removed the plastic wadding and weighed the lead slug alone and got 249.4 grains. So you're looking at a pretty good chunk of lead for such a small shotgun. The 28 gauge bore, of course, the nominal bore size is 550 thousandths if you were looking at a bore size. If you measured a 28 gauge the way you would measure a 410 bore, it would be 550. So. I put my calipers on the slug and got 551 and a half thousandths of an inch. So just a touch bigger than what the bore diameter would be. And that's just to keep a good seal on the bore as it, go, as it travels down the barrel. These sharp edges on the slug, the shoulder, kind of reminds me of a wad cutter in a handgun round. And we know wad cutters, they cut a perfect circle and, and do a lot of damage. They do a lot of cutting. They don't, they don't push through like a rounded bullet would. I'm gonna pull this wad off here. That wad actually works as kind of a drag stabilization device, kind of like a skirt on a birdie. If you've ever played badminton, it helps it fly forward. You can see it kind of just snaps into the base of the lead part here. This is the powder charge. If anybody's interested in that, I guess I should turn the camera where you can see it. So that's the powder charge that came out of the shot shell. And that's all there is to it. You've got your, there's still more powder in there. You got your primer, powder, wad, and slug. That's all there is to it. So with that being said, let's head down to the range and we'll do a little bit of shooting, a little accuracy check, and, and see what we can destroy with this slug. All right, so we're down here at the range. Let's start off by getting some real world numbers. I've got my TriStar Viper G2 28 gauge. It's a very lightweight 5.2 pound semi-automatic 28 gauge shotgun. Has a 28 inch barrel, running a skeet choke. Got the ballistic precision from Codwell. Chronograph over there. Fourteen hundred twenty-four feet per second. 
1408. 1442. 1395. And 1415 feet per second. So let's go crunch these numbers and see what we've got. All right, guys, so if my Kentucky math is correct, that gives us an, a mean velocity of about 1,417 feet per second, a standard deviation of 18, and an extreme spread of 47 feet per second. So uh, very close to what's advertised. You know, that's, uh, that's not bad at all. Uh, standard deviation's pretty good. So I guess the question is, can I hit anything? Uh, haven't shot these at a target yet, so this is the very first time that I'm gonna put one on paper. Have no idea where they're hitting. So I'm gonna start out at 25 yards here, uh, shoot a three shot group and just see where they're hitting at. See what my hold needs to be to move farther back. The recoil is very light. Even on a shotgun this light, the recoil is it's not much at all. About anybody that's actually big enough to go deer hunting could, could handle one of these. All right. Let's go check the target out and see what I've done. All right, so three shots all on target here. Very happy with that elevation and even the windage isn't off by much, just a little to the left. So, and at 25 yards, now free standing, not using any kind of a bench. And you also have to take into consideration that I've just got a bead on the shotgun. I'm not using any kind of rear sight or an optic or anything like that. You could obviously decrease the size of these groups dramatically. But at 25 yards, I shot about a two and a quarter inch group. From center to center of the farthest two, about two and a quarter inches. So that gives me confidence to back on up to 50 and give it a try. We'll see what we get then. I do see, though, some evidence of y'all that these ripped holes, look how nice and round that one is. You can tell that it hit straight on. These two here are ripped to the side, which is evidence of that slug and that wad that's connected to the slug. Kind of yawing left and right as it goes down range so we'll see we'll see what it looks like at 50 and see what it does okay i'm set up at 50 yards i don't know how well you guys can see that on this camera i do have a second camera down range but my battery light's flashing on it <laughs> i hope that i hold up long enough to do this so i've got to kind of rush and get it done Three shots, 50 yards. Okay, I can't even tell. I can see one of my hits. The, it's way over in the black there, but I can't tell where I hit all of them. So I'll walk down and grab the target. And we'll take a look at it. Okay, 50 yard target. Shot. About three and three quarter inches. So really, I shot better at 50 than I did at 25 because at 25, I shot a two and a quarter inch group 
really that at 50 you'd think that would have opened up to a four and a half inch group so shot a little better that time the I, I switched the choke out between those two shoots I noticed the yaw in that 25 round group so I went to an improved cylinder. I went from a skeet to an improved cylinder. So I just added just slightly more constriction in the choke. You can see I'm still getting some yaw. It's ripping the paper up. But I, I thought maybe adding a little bit of choke would help and it may have helped a little bit. Uh, they don't look quite as bad as they did on that 25 yard target, but it is what it is. That's uh, offhand shooting at 50 yards. Take it for what you will. I don't have a real solid bench down here to set up. Uh, I've set up a little table before and done some group shooting. And basically, I just get laughed off the internet. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to shoot the best I can freestanding. And that'll be my accuracy check. Just know that you can do much better than this if you wanted to sit down on a bench and really take your time and and shoot but I just do real world shooting here anyway so I'm happy with that so we know I can hit with them we know how fast they're going we know their energy level so let's find a couple of things to shoot and do some uh, penetration tests or, or maybe just find something to destroy here alright guys so let's start out with some water jugs I've got eight jugs lined up here let's see how many we can get through with a Brittany Key 28 gauge, 5 8 ounce slug. <laughs> well, let's go see what we've done. All right, guys, so I hit that at a bad angle. We went through four water jugs. You can see here, there's three of them. And then this fourth one, I hit kind of high and it came out the side and kind of veered off and missed the rest of the jugs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just shoot these again, and hit this one a little lower, see if we can wipe these out. All right. Water jugs, take two. <laughs> I think I got a little better shot placement that time. Let's go have a look. All right, so we only got two jugs left on the table. I had five there. This one shot through and through. And I think we captured the slug in this one, so the fifth jug. Yep, awesome. I was worried we wouldn't have enough jugs to uh, catch it after I messed that first shot up. Turns out, Just enough. <laughs> so we got just a little bit of mushrooming, not much. That's one of the differences between these and foster slugs. Foster slugs tend to deform, fragment. The Brennicky style slugs tend to hold together pretty well. That wad has collapsed, kind of made it into one little unit there. All right, guys, I got something a little bit different here this time. I've got 12 three-quarter inch thick pine boards set up all in a row. 
I've got the top braced. I got a lot of suggestions from you guys when I was doing the tile videos that the domino effect of just knocking the tile over was having an effect on my results as of how many tile I was shooting through. So I did brace these at the top. Don't know how well that'll hold up when we shoot it, but we'll find out. Let's see how many pine boards a 28 gauge slug can go through. All right, I'm ready to do this. Got my slug ready. 28 gauge Brennicky slug versus pine boards. <laughs> Looks like a pretty good hit there on the front. Let's see what I've done. All right, so we went through one, two, three, four, five, six. We went all the way through six boards, and this seventh board got smacked pretty good. It actually split the board. Now, the slug we found on the ground here beside the pine board set up mushroomed up pretty good. It ripped the plastic wad off. We did recover it too. Right there's all that's left of the plastic wad. Here's a little closer look at what we recovered there. These two are the plastic wadding pieces. And here's your lead slug. All right, guys, so that's going to conclude my look at the Brennicky USA 28-gauge shotgun slug. Kind of ballistically, some of my 44 Magnum, my medium 44 Magnum rifle loads are comparative to some of this stuff. I guess a better comparison would be a 54 caliber black powder muzzleloader. Probably be kind of similar to the results you're going to get. Now, I know some people don't even like shotgun slugs. They, a rifle is going to beat a shotgun slug. A shotgun's better off as a shotgun. I understand all that, but if you've only got one gun and you want to make the most out of it, shotgun slugs sure come in handy. And besides that, as far as like hunting, uh, there are certain places where you can only shoot with shotgun slugs. And you aren't allowed to use center fire rifles. So slugs are, they're always going to be around. They're always going to be handy to have, in my opinion. So that's kind of all I got on that. If you enjoyed the slug testing, Go and check out the Tau Flater Mouse channel. I'm sure you guys that watch my channel, you're probably already well aware of those guys. I've got one of their t-shirts on today. Just a great group of guys that are out there bringing us the highest quality slug test here on YouTube. I mean, they are top notch. And of course, you know, Jeff puts all that stuff together and Danny and Officer Greg do most of the shooting. And uh, man, those guys just keep me laughing. Just really good people. They've helped my channel out a lot. I wish I could help them back somehow. Uh, of course, my channel being so small, there's no way I can help them as much as they help me, and that says a lot about their character. So that's all I got today. I'll talk with you guys again soon.